All right, so for those of you who are, hey, Whitney, I don't know if you can hear me yet. Hey, how are you? I see you just connected. Whitney, you're the first one here. I'm Janine, and this is yoga for awesome. today. Can you hear me okay? I hear you, yeah. Okay, awesome, good. I'm so glad you're here. We're gonna get going in about six minutes. I have 10.09 on my clock. Yep, perfect. So, um, perfect, so just, if you wanna turn your video on, great. If you don't want to, that's okay too. I'm just glad that you can hear me. In a few minutes, I'm gonna mute everybody so that there's no distractions during class. Perfect. But if you have questions for right now, you can chat with me or you can chat in the chat box after I mute everybody. Okay. Okay, sound good. So I'm just gonna get, I usually teach with blocks and with straps. So if you have those in your bag, you can just take a couple minutes to get set up. I'm gonna do the same thing. <laughs> Grab my blocks and my strap. Great, thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Might be a quiet class if it's just us. <laughs> we'll see. The last couple of Saturdays, I've had like 30 people here. So, yeah, I do a lot of Saturday ones and it's usually we'll pretty busy. shows up today. It's, are you from Colorado? Yes, I am. Okay. Yeah, it's a little cooler today. Yes, it so, is. There might be some who are taking advantage of it and working outside, and others who are like, no, <laughs> not today. It's a little too chilly. Who knows? Have you been in one of my classes before? I don't think so. Okay, that's okay. Not a problem. All right, we've got one other. Hey, Roman. Oh, his audio is not connected yet. Yep, it takes a minute. All right, Sam's coming on. Awesome. Hey, Sam, how are you? <laughs> Your computer's muted. That's fine. You don't have to turn it off. I'm going to, we're going to get going in about, uh, let's see, three minutes. And so while I'm waiting for everybody else to come, I'm going to mute everybody just as people are trickling in. Um, just as people are trickling in, then there's not any, <laughs> any, screen switching going on, which has happened in other classes. <laughs> People are teaching and then it switches over to another another screen and everybody's like, wait, where did the teacher go? Um, but anyway, yeah, like I said, we're gonna get going in just a few minutes. I'm gonna find my practice for today. It's gonna be a fun one. I wanted to add in a, like a playful element today for our yoga practice. Um, this is a really great um, way, I think, to relieve stress is to have kind of a sense of humor about things. It's kind of a um, finding a balance and striking a balance between being and becoming. Let me see if I can find where I made these notes. I make lots of yoga notes. <laughs> So anyway, oh, here it is. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to put my screen up just a little bit so that you guys can see my whole mat there behind me. I can't believe we just have two people here today. <laughs> oh, that's okay. It's totally fine. I'm happy to do for just one person. If it's just one person came today for yoga, it would be worth it. So we might have a few more people trickle in today. That's okay. I'm happy to be here doing some yoga. And so just so that you guys know, I know um, <laughs> Sam, actually Sam and Debbie were both here last week. Hey Debbie, um, the last time. And um, they both know that I have four kids and <laughs> teaching in my basement can sometimes be a little bit you just never know what we're going to get. Okay, awesome. We have a few more people coming in to class. 
<laughs> I guess last time my husband was on, uh, my husband is living in Turkey right now. And so he was in the class because it was evening time for him. And I was teaching the class. <laughs> he could hear the kids upstairs. So he grabbed his phone and was texting the kids in the middle of my class, be quiet upstairs. We can hear everything that you're doing. That was pretty funny. Okay, we are ready to go. So I've been interacting with some people. I know they can hear me. If you guys wanna do screens on, that's kind of fun. If you want to just um, have your screen off and practice without screen, that's okay. Everybody is muted. So if you want to chat with me, you can chat in the chat box. And I will get to the chats after class because once I step away from my computer, I can't see the chat. Um, but I'll come back to the chat after the class is over. All right, so just for those of you who are unfamiliar with my classes or are brand new to yoga, I like to teach with props. If you have props, great. If you don't have props, that's okay. Well, there are ways to work around them. Even if you have just a regular belt, this is my yoga strap um, for my mat. You can just grab a belt. You can grab something on hand as a strap. Um, I'm gonna give you a few seconds to grab something if you need it. Uh, as far as the yoga blocks go, a blanket can sometimes suffice for that, as well as even like some boxes out of your pantry. Like you can get something really simple to help bring your foot or help bring the floor a little closer to your hand in some of the poses. And um, I don't know how flexible you are if you need even need those in the first place. Sometimes that just helps to um, have a prop to help with the integrity of the pose. So it's up to you, um, but it's not necessary. So don't panic. If you see me grabbing something, you're like, I don't have that. That's totally fine. Um, the other thing about practice today is that uh, it's more of a playful class. We're going to do more of a playful yoga practice today. And I want you thinking about that um, because it is a little bit more challenging physically. And if you can't do the, the pose or whatever it is I'm doing, I want you to remember this element of fun and play when it comes to your physical abilities, because so often we end up judging ourselves and being harsh on ourselves because our bodies aren't able to do um, something. And so I want you to, to just continue to tune back into that. All right, let's start off with a meditation on our mats. I've got my yoga heater here. Because <laughs> my yoga heater, my room heater, because it's cold in my basement. But I want you to find something if you want to sit on a block, you can sit on a block to elevate your hips or just find a cozy seat on your mat. Okay, actually, is somebody, I'm just going to quick ch check my chat to make sure everybody can hear me okay. Okay, Jennifer, if you can't hear me, hopefully you can hear me. Um, it's going to be something on your end, my dear. It's going to be some, turn up your volume. You're all good now. Okay, super. Okay, let's go. Okay. All right. All right, so settle in. Start to settle in and just start to feel the points of contact that you have with your mat, with the floor. Start bringing your awareness to your breath how you're feeling in your body. I want you to just take a moment to just honor that you're here because you said yes to yourself this morning and to your yoga practice, to yourself. And that is sometimes not a very easy thing to do. So. I'm glad you're here and I hope that you're also really grateful that you made the time today. So tuning into your breath, I want you to start to just 
Elongate your inhales as well as your exhales to help you settle in to your body and to the experience that you're going to have in the next 60 minutes and to be present with yourself. The breath is always a great place to start. So let's take a big inhale together. I want you to fill up, before we start, I want you to fill up from the base of your lungs, mid lung, top of your lung, all the way up to your collarbones. And I'm gonna have you hold the inhale for just a moment and then take just a little sip, an extra sip of inhale, and then exhale, open your lips and sigh all the way out, all the way to the very bottom of your exhale. So let's do that together, okay? So inhale, filling up all the way. Mid lung, top of your lungs, hold. Take a little inhale sip and exhale. Let's do one more of those. Filling up from the base of your lung, mid lungs, top of the lungs, filling all the way up. Take a sip and exhale. Feels really good. <laughs> okay, and let's for the last one, I want you to bring your fingertips out towards the side as you fill all the way up, bringing your fingertips up towards the ceiling as you complete your inhale. Inhale and exhale. Bring your hands down to heart center as you exhale completely. All right, blink your eyes open. Move your block if you were sitting on one and let's come to all fours, tabletop position on your mat. And let's just start off with some barrel rolls with our, with our ribs. So I want you to start, it's kind of like cat-cow, but I want you to roll it. So bring your rib cage out to the side, up towards the ceiling, and then to the other side and bring your navel down towards your mat as you're rolling. And then reverse directions. I want you to roll your ribs the other way. You can even get your hips and your elbows into it if you want to. Again, this, this practice today has an element of fun and playfulness to it. So you can imagine like different animals with this. You can imagine cats doing their thing, you know, when they stretch and, and flex and open their little toes, you know, <laughs> you watch an animal do something similar. Okay, now I want you to come into child's pose. Touch your toes in the back, knees go wide. Sink your hips towards your ankles and place your forehead on your mat. And just settle in. I'm gonna lift my head for just a moment so I can talk to you. I want you to just settle into this pose for a moment. Again, kind of connecting to your, like I said, that inner playfulness, your inner child, in order to um, really get the most out of this practice today. Inhale, come up, and let's come into downward facing dog. Just take a moment here in dog pose, since this is our first dog of the day. Now, dog, I want you to pedal out your dog, bending each knee. You can get a little wiggly in your hips if you want to as well, shifting your hips, maybe even looking under an armpit one at a time, one side at a time. All right, bring your knees down to the mat, and we're going to start doing this fun little thing here where we're going to start braiding our legs. So I want you to start by taking your right knee and placing it on the left side of your left knee so your knees are crossed and then I want you to undo the left leg I'm making really big movements here so you guys can see me on your screens and taking your knee to the right side of your right knee so you're kind of doing this fun little braid thing here with your knees some of you have maybe never done this before in a yoga class <laughs> and that's okay so keep going with your knees to the end of your mat, and then start walking your knees forward. So you're kind of doing the opposite brain here 
with your knees, making it super fun, right? Very playful, very fun. <laughs> All right, in this practice today, we're gonna really focus in on doing some hip opening. All right, now come back to the middle of your mat. If you've gone up to the top of your mat, just come back to the middle and then back into tabletop position. Knees under hips, hands under shoulders. Tuck your, tuck your toes under and come into down dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. I'm gonna tuck my shirt in here to my pants, okay. All right, I was saying we're gonna do some hip opening in class today. The bottom of your exhale, bend your knees and step towards your hands in forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, place your hands on your shins. Exhale, forward fold. And inhale, reach your eyes, come all the way up. Exhale, hands, the heart center, samasthiti. I'm just gonna check to make sure you guys can see my whole body here. Okay. All right, let's flow through some sun salutations, but we're gonna start off with Ekapadakalavasana prep. So that is just standing figure four. So I'm gonna show you guys facing you. Place your right ankle on your left knee and squat down. Bring your hips back. Your heart is forward. You can place your hands at heart center if you want to. Oh yeah, this is great. So this is standing leg is left side. Good. And then release and just come into a forward fold. Just bring everything down towards your mat, towards the earth. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, step back into a plank pose. Hold your plank here on your inhale, and then exhale, knees, chest, chin, bring it all the way down to the mat. Roll your shoulder blades down your back as you inhale, lifting your heart, and then exhale, lift your hips, come back into downward facing dog. Just a few breaths here. Make them long. Make them intentional. All 10 toes should be facing forward and your hips or your feet should be hip width apart. The bottom of your exhale, bend your knees. Step forward between your hands. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, root to rise. Sweeping your fingertips out towards the sides and up towards the sky. Exhale, hands to heart center. So I'm going to let's switch sides. This time the standing leg is going to be on your right side. So left ankle, right knee, shift your hips back. Use your breath to help you stay centered and balanced. A little wobbles. We embrace all the wobbles, particularly today. This is part of the intention of the practice is to bring that element of fun even when we topple over, even when we fall a little bit. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Get long from your tailbone to the crown of your head. And then exhale, step back into plank. Come all the way down to your belly on your mat. Inhale, lift your heart. And exhale, press back, downward facing dog. Tune in again to the points of contact that you have with the mat. And think about pressing the floor away strongly. So each of your fingers is engaged. Your upper arm bones are rolling in so that your elbow creases are facing forward. The bottom of your exhale, bend your knees, step forward, inhale, halfway lift, exhale, forward fold. Root to rise, come all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. 
So I'm going to see Let's do that one more time. Okay. Actually, you know what? We're going to do. No, let's. Okay. We're going to move on. We are going to move on, but we're still starting off with Ekapada. Okay. So ground through your left standing leg. No, yeah, left standing leg. Right ankle is on your left knee. Starting out here. So you're in figure four. Let me face you so you can see. This is the same thing we've been doing. You're balancing here. <laughs> I can balance if I can balance here. Here we go. You might even on this time, because you've opened up your hip just a little bit, you might get your, <clears throat> your palms down towards your shin. You might even reach the floor if you can. Okay, if you've got the flexibility there, otherwise just stay there. And if this is too much for you, just come into chair pose, okay? Chair pose is both feet on the floor, sinking your hips down. Okay. So in one movement, I want you, we're moving into high lunge. We're gonna do this sequence several times so you guys get the hang of it. Moving into high lunge, and then we're going to do lunge with a twist into warrior two. So I'm going to talk you through it, okay? So bring your right foot back into high lunge. Now you're in crescent pose. Your heel is up off the mat. Inhale, reach your fingertips up overhead and settle into this pose. Exhale, bring your hands down. Right hand touches the earth. Left hand comes to your left hip and start to roll open into a twist towards the left side. Keep your breath moving. All right, from here, we're moving into warrior two. So you're facing the left side and in warrior two, when you sweep open, you're going to end up facing the right side. I want you to just think about what that feels like in your body before you move. You're gonna have to ground your heel in the back and then on an inhale, we're gonna windmill open towards the right side. So let's practice. Ground your back foot, windmill open towards the right side, lunge forward, keep your front knee bent, and your gaze is over your left fingertips. Exhale, frame your front foot with your hands, come back into a lunge, Flow through your vinyasa or meet me a downward facing dog. So if you're doing the vinyasa, exhale, come into chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Everybody should be in down dog. The bottom of your exhale, bend your knees. Let's come to the front of the mat. You can hop or step forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, four folds. Inhale, root to rise. Me all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. So I'm going to see It was fun, wasn't it? Okay. Ground through your right standing leg. Ekapada on the left side. Sink your hips down. And again, you can play around with where your hands are. It can be in prayer position on your hips. You can reach down and touch the floor. I want you to get used to being okay with what your body is capable of doing from this playful element, from a playful place, okay? All right, inhale, back up, and in one movement, come into crescent pose. Gently touch your toes down in the back. Inhale, reach fingertips up towards the ceiling. Beautiful hip opener here. Keep your breath moving. And exhale, hands, your left hand towards the mat, right hand towards your hip and start to spiral open towards the right side. Fingertips moving up towards the sky last. All right, in your mind, I want you thinking about warrior two and what that feels like. And on an inhale, ground your back foot and come up into warrior two. Opening up towards the left side. All 
All right, we're gonna do that a few more times on each side, but we're gonna move a little bit faster, okay? Now that you guys kinda have it, you know what's coming next. All right, exhale, frame your front foot with your hands, step back, flow through your vinyasa, inhale, lift your heart, exhale. Auto move to Manasana, now we're facing dog. Tune back into your breath. Use it to help you to stay grounded. Bottom of the exhale, bend your knees and float or step towards the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Root your eyes and come all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. All right, sink your hips. Skalavasana prep. Ekapadagalavasana prep, I should say. Come down, maybe a little bit further this time. You might even like start to hook your toes around your tricep on the left arm. Inhale, come into crescent moon. Toes back. Reach your fingertips up towards the sky. One big sweeping movement. Exhale, right hand comes down, twisting towards the left side. And a lunge twist. And then exhale, round your back foot, sweeping your fingertips open. Warrior two, left side. Beautiful, exhale, come down. Hands to the mat in a lunge position. Step back into downward facing dog or flow through your vinyasa, yogi's choice. Either way, meet me in down dog. The bottom of your exhale, bend your knees. Step or float to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Root your rise and come all the way back up to a stand. So Mastitihi, hands to heart center. And now I need to turn off my heater. <laughs> because I am warm. Okay, anybody else? All right, let's do it. Right side, balance on your standing leg. Akapadagalavasana prep, left side. Left ankle onto your right knee and start to shift your hips back. Your heart comes forward and down towards the earth. In one movement, come into high lunge. Left leg comes back. Land as gracefully as you possibly can. <laughs> and if not, it's okay. Beautiful, hands towards the ceiling. And then exhale, left hand comes down, right hand towards your hip. Start to open towards the right side. Fingertips up towards the ceiling last. One big movement on an inhale. Round your back foot. Windmill open, warrior two. Gaze over your front fingertips. Exhale, frame your front foot. Step back. You either flow through your vinyasa or come into downward facing dog. And just so you guys know, in my classes and really in any yoga class, child's pose, Tabletop is yours at any time. Now, do you feel like, whoo, yeah, I need a little break? Take a child's pose until you're ready to jump back in. In your down dog, I want you to practice getting quiet right here. Tune back into your breath. Maybe you're hearing a clock on the wall. Maybe you're hearing kids playing or neighbors mowing their lawns. Just notice what's going on. The bottom of your exhale, bend your knees and step or float to the top of the mat. 
Inhale, lift, halfway up, exhale, forward fold. Root to rise, come all the way up. And exhale, hands to heart center. I remember when that was such a big deal, when I could jump to my hands <laughs> and would not fall forward and hit my hand on the floor. All right, but that's all part of it. You've got to learn how to play and have fun when you're challenging yourself. Inhale. Reach your fingertips up. Oh, I forgot we're doing Agapata. <laughs> I'm getting a little ahead of myself. So Agapata Galavasana prep. One more time on each side. We're doing this, this sequence three times. So ground through your left standing leg. Right ankle is on your, on your left knee. And again, play around. Where can you go with this? Can you come down? Can you come up? If you practice doing a few different things. In one big breath, I want you to bring your right foot back, high lunge, reach your fingertips. And exhale, right hand comes down, spiraling open towards the left side. Hopefully you've created more of a dance with the sequence by this point. Round your back foot, make a big movement to get into warrior two with your arms. Sometimes it's nice to flow through the sequence a few times with the muscle memory because then you can bring more of a presence and more of awareness to your body. Step back into a plank and flow through your vinyasa or meet me in downward facing dog. The bottom of your exhale, bend your knees. And try and hop to the front of your mat or just step up there. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Root your eyes and come all the way back up. Exhale, hands to heart center. One of the reasons I was choosing this practice, this theme today, go ahead and ground through your right standing leg and come into Agapada on your left side. Shift your hips back. Figure four is because I've found myself in the last week or two taking life a little too seriously. <laughs> and I've really needed to remind myself, hey, we're, we're still having joy even when things feel difficult or when you're faced with disappointment or uncertainty. Inhale, come to high lunge, left side. Toes touch in the back, reach your fingertips up. Exhale, left hand comes down, spiraling open towards the right side in a beautiful twist. Ground your back heel, warrior two, left side. Sorry, <laughs> opening to the left side. Right foot is forward. Everything all of a sudden got super still in my house. It makes me wonder, <laughs> what are they up to? Frame your front foot, flow through your vinyasa. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra, and then lift your hips back, downward facing dog. Bottom of your exhale, bend your knees. Step towards your hands. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Root to rise, come all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Okay, I'm a little chattier virtually than I am in, in person because I want to be able to give you guys all the cues. I am going to show you the next sequence before you do it so that you know where to go. And I'm doing this because um, I'm gonna do it on my, I'm gonna start off standing left leg and so will you. So I'm gonna stand over on the side of my mat. But I want you to know where you're going because some of these poses might be challenging for you. And if you're like, okay, I'm gonna try that and know where I'm going, sometimes it's a little easier, okay? So we're gonna start off standing on the left side and again, just watch. You can do it with me if you want to. But if you're not sure, just watch. We're going to do it again. Same side. Okay? Start off holding 
right foot, right hand. And then we're gonna swing into dancer pose. So this means you're kicking back with your right foot. Again, we walk them all the wobbles. Okay, but from here, this is a closed hip pose. My shoulders and hips are square towards the floor. I'm gonna to start to open up towards the right side as I reach towards the floor, coming into Ardha Chandrasana or Ardha Chandrasana half moon. So you see how I did that? I was just standing here and I just started to hinge forward, ending up in half moon pose. So you do you on this one. And maybe if that's too much for you to balance, you just come into triangle pose instead. Okay, but I want you to, again, use this element of play that we've talked about to, um, to push yourself a little bit in this practice today, not getting disappointed or frustrated with your body, but welcoming all of it because that's how you get better. When I first did half moon here, I fall all over the place, okay? So now I can hold it here. So eventually we're gonna come into standing splits. So both hands are on the floor, lifting your back leg. And I don't have the best flexibility on the planet, but this is where my standing splits are. It kind of looks like a warrior three, because I just, this is as, top, as high as my top leg goes. And that's okay. And then eventually we're gonna come into Anjani Asana lunge and then back into vinyasa, okay? So that's where we're going. All right, let's do it together. Here we go. So ground your energy through your left standing leg, and we're gonna hold on to your foot right side, okay? I'm gonna actually back up my mat just a smidge. I don't hit my mirror there, okay. All right, so here we are in this lovely, Big quad stretch. Okay, place your foot, right hand, start to reach forward, left side, and come into dancer pose. Kicking your back, foot back into your hand. So you get leverage and lift here. Thinking about heart, <laughs> I just dipped over. Thinking about your heart lifting, your foot lifting at the same time. Don't use me as your drishti. And then you're gonna reach towards the floor into Ardha opening towards the side. If you can't do Ardhachapasana, just release your foot and come into half moon. Again, if you can't do half moon, come into triangle pose. Breathe. Use your breath to stay grounded. This is the coolest pose. I think you just, it feels like such a big starburst <laughs> to the side. I feel your energy radiating through fingers and toes and all of it. And then bring your right hand towards the ground and come into standing splits. And then bring your toes back to the back of your mat, drop your back knee and come into Anjani Asana. Everybody should be here in the lunge, crescent moon. Woo, you feel the difference in the energy in your two legs. Beautiful, exhale, hands to your mat, framing your front foot. Step back into a plank pose. And then you can either take child's pose if you need to, flow through your vinyasa, coming down to your belly, or meet me in downward facing dog. Inhale, cobra or up dog. And then back into downward facing dog. Great job, you guys. No matter what you did on that side, it was awesome. All right, bottom of your exhale, bend your knees. You can step or float to the top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, chest, <laughs> forward fold. And then inhale, reach. Oh, exhale. Hands to heart center. Feel the difference. Two sides of your body. All right, and this is why if you need blocks, I'd like to have them handy. If you need them to bring the floor a little closer to you, and use them. Inhale, reach. Let's do the other side. Oh, we're not reaching first. We're just going to grab the back foot. Okay, so grab your left foot this time. Left foot. Bring it as close as you can to your hips. And then start to come forward into dancer. Kicking your left foot back into your hands. Coming forward.
Hold this as far as long as you'd like. And then start to reach towards the floor with your right hand, staying balanced on the right side. Opening up to artisan, <laughs> I am tripping on that one today, Ardhachapasana. Or releasing your back foot into Ardhachandrasana, half moon. Bring your left hand down towards the mat into standing splits, lifting your back leg as high as it will go, even if it's just a few inches off the floor. Celebrate that. Bring your toes to the back of the mat. Drop your back knee into Anjani Asana. Crescent moon, creating a big, beautiful line from your left heel up towards your fingertips. Exhale, hands to the mat. Step back, flow through your vinyasa. Take a break if you need to. Meet me in downward facing dog, either way. Inhale, lift. Exhale. Now we're facing dog. The bottom of your exhale, bend your knees. Step or float to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. All the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. I hope you guys thought that was fun or you had a little bit of fun in that sequence. Let's do it one more time, each side. And again, be okay with what your body is doing, what your body is capable of doing. This might be easy <laughs> for some of you guys. It is not easy for me. Uh, but some of you guys are like, I totally got this. Awesome. If you're like me, there are places that are definitely more challenging. So grab your, we're going to start off grabbing your right foot. Start to come forward. Lifting heart, kicking back, and then starting to reach towards the floor. Embracing all of the wobbles. Opening up towards the right side. Eventually, you want to release your back foot. If you haven't done so already, whoop. Oh, <laughs> falling over. Some days are just more wobbly than other days too. That's okay. And then bring your right hand down towards the mat, standing and standing splits. Feeling the energy moving through your standing leg. Using your breath to make space in your body for the work. And then drop your back, your back foot, your back knee. Inhaling and reaching on Janiyasana. And exhale, hands to the mat. Step back, flow through your vinyasa. We'll meet me in down dog. However you get there. Tune back into your breath. Bottom of your exhale, bend your knees. Step or float towards your hands. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Root to rise, coming all the way up. Reaching through your ring fingers, and then hands to prayer position. All right, I'm gonna switch sides of my mat one more time so I can still face you guys. You can still see what I'm doing, and if you want to, to change positions in your mat too, you can. Ground through your right standing leg, grab your left foot. Told you there's lots of hips today, <laughs> lots of hip things and then start to come forward into dancer. This of course is quad. Eventually, you're gonna make your way down to the floor, opening to the side, Ardha Chapasana. Releasing your back foot, bursting open. 
into Ardha Chandrasana, half moon. Or like I said, you can keep both feet on the floor and do triangle here. Bring your left hand to the mat. Lift your back leg up into standing splits. Releasing the muscles of the back of your neck. And then exhaling and bring your toes to the mat behind you, dropping your back knee and inhaling into Anjaniyasana. You guys are doing awesome. Exhale, hands to the mat. Ooh, step back. Flow through your vinyasa or meet me in downward facing dog. We're just doing that sequence twice. So enjoy <laughs> your down dog. Actually, let's all come to a child's pose. So come into the tabletop, toes touch in the back, knees go wide, and then bring your hips towards your heels. Forehead comes to your mat. All right, come back up into downward dog. And then in, on your inhale, lift your right leg up into three-legged dog and come into lizard pose. So that is when you bring your foot on the outside of your right hand. So I've come into a lunge, but it's a little bit different lunge set up here because my right knee is hugging into my right shoulder. Now, if you don't have the flexibility here, your foot's back here, that's okay. That's totally fine. We're just going to stay here for just a minute. I want you to really get into your back hip here for a minute, your left hip. So come up as high as you can on your fingertips in the front. Drop your back knee down to the mat. And it's like you're pulling your heart through. So just a minute. In this lunge, this big lunge here. Now I want you to change your position. If you can bring your forearms down to the floor, you can. You can also, just depending on how you're doing in your body, you can also lift your back knee if you want to. I'm gonna keep my back knee on the floor just because I feel like this is a bigger stretch for me, but you gotta listen to your body to know what it is that you need today. If you can't get your forearms down to the floor, that's okay, just stay right here, okay, right up on your hands. All right, either way, come up to your hands and then we're gonna come into pigeon pose, right side. So you gotta kind of work your right foot over to the left side of your mat. And this is gonna look different for everybody's body. Okay, so my, my foot is kind of over here on the side. Some of you might be able to even get your foot a little bit higher so that your shin bone is parallel to the front edge of the mat. That's awesome. If you don't have that kind of flexibility and your foot is back here by your hips a little bit more, that's also awesome. So you got to figure out what you can do here for yourself. If you need a little cush, you can grab a blanket or a pillow or your block and stick it underneath your hips here for a little extra support. This is a little high for me, but a blanket would feel really good too. So it's up to you and your body, but we're going to start off in king pigeon. So get the props that you need and meet me here. King pigeon is when you're up on your fingertips in the front and your heart is open. So it's this big stretch through quad on the left side, hips on the right side, and it's a back bend too. And then on your next exhale, I want you to start coming forward into sleeping pigeon, wherever that is for you. It could be down here on your forearms. You could also make a little pillow with your forearms and bring your head down if you have the range of motion in your body. If you don't, again, remember that element of play and be okay with what is. Kind of that, that balance between being right now and becoming. And using play as a tool to help you not get discouraged. I think that's the biggest takeaway from this practice today is being able to use your mind and the thoughts that you're having about your experience to have fun. 
All right, come on up to your hands. I'm gonna inch my back knee forward just this, a little bit because I'm gonna bend my back knee and grab hold of my foot. If you have a strap, again, this is where that comes in handy. You can use a belt if you don't have the range of motion to hold your foot. I did not when I first started doing yoga. Um, and so you get better with time, create more space with time. But for today, for me, I have done a lot of weightlifting lately and my quads are very tight. So I'm actually going to try and coax my shoulders forward to square off the top of the mat. You might need this kind of side opening here, this back bend to open towards the side. If that's what you need today, then stay right here. If you're like me and you need just a little bit more space in that front quad, try and square your shoulders to the front of your mat. Oh, good. Release slowly, gently. Don't let your foot flop on the floor. And then gently, very gently, come into a downward facing dog. You're going to inch your hips forward and bring your back, your right foot back. Take a moment. You can pedal out your dog if you want to. Eventually come to a place of stillness in this pose and just notice the different energy that you're experiencing and feeling in your body after that, after all that work that we just did. All right, this time left leg rises, three-legged dog, left leg rises, and then come into lizard pose. Woo, all right. So left foot is on the outside of your left hand and your left knee is hugging into your shoulder. And again, I'm going to start off dropping my back knee to the mat and play around with what feels good for you. If you want to bring your forearms down to the mat, you can. If you want to stay up on your hands, maybe that's as far as you go. That's totally fine. Totally fine. All right, come back up on your hands. And let's come into pigeon pose, left side. You're gonna work your, your uh, left foot over towards the right side of your mat. Your left knee is over to the left side. And let's start off in king pigeon again. Situate your props to help support your hips so that you feel comfortably challenged in this pose. You don't wanna be sitting here in total discomfort or definitely not pain, right? So we're gonna eliminate pain and you just want to feel all of the opening that's happening in your hips. And you want to be in a place energetically where you're allowing it to happen instead of fighting against it. So if you need a prop on your hips, you place a prop by all means. Use the props to help you. All right, and then come to sleeping pigeon. Forearms come down. You can make a little pillow for your head and bring your chest a little closer to the mat if you can, if you'd like to. All right, come up to your hands. If you practice with me regularly, if you come to my classes, you know I really like doing a lot of hips because I think hips are where we store a lot of our energy. Okay, go ahead and reach back for that back foot. You can either lasso it with a strap. <clears throat> but again, choose your own adventure with your shoulder position. You can do side opening to the right side or you can square off towards the front edge of your mat. So just with everything that's been happening 
I have been even doing more hips <laughs> than usual. And I find that that has definitely been helpful. You know, the sensation that I'm feeling in my hips have changed. I feel like there's even more kind of an intense feeling here. Again, it could be due to weightlifting and also I think it's both. I think it's energy and weights. And that's so I kind of just get to know yourself. Okay, go ahead and release the back foot and gently shift yourself back into downward facing dog. Just get there as slowly as you need to go. Wow, <laughs> that's a lot. That's a lot for me anyway. Woo. Okay, get a little shifty if you want to. Okay, and then drop your knees into tabletop and come into a seated position on your mat. All right. Oh, that was amazing. That felt really good. All that. Okay. Okay. So come into Janya Shirshasana. So bend your right, right knee, bring your ankle in towards your hips. Left leg is extended. Bring your hands by your hips. And we're gonna do a little seated extension here. So ground your sits bones into your mat and lift your head, kind of using your hands to help you get long. And lift from the back of your ears up towards the ceiling. Square your hips towards your leg and then exhale forward fold. and just start to melt yourself into this position. Inhale, come up. And then switch sides. All right, because this is kind of a more playful practice, I am going to invite some of you who want to, to do try an arm balance after this is over. For the rest of you who are like, no, I just wanna sit here and stretch, <laughs> that's totally fine. I'm gonna give you the option to do either one. But we've done quite a bit of hip opening. And if you wanna try flying pigeon today or another arm balance, I can walk you through some of that. But for the rest of you, I want you continuing to do some of these seated stretches. So I want you in posh, I want you to do two. You can do um, Paschimottanasana, which you're with your feet together like this, starting off in staff pose and a forward fold over your legs and then moving into wide legged forward fold, seated forward fold, okay? So those are the two I want you to try. For everybody else, your hips are open enough to try Ekapadagavasana. We've done a lot of the preps for that right, with all of this movement that we did with our figure fours and pigeon pose that we just did. If you want to add in the arm balance, you can try that today. I'm gonna to walk you through it. It's up to you. I know some of you want the challenge and wanna try it. And again, this is where that element of fun comes into play. Everybody else, I want you guys to keep doing your seated stretches, okay? <laughs> Whatever you're doing. And I'll come back to seated stretches in just a minute. We'll end with some twists and then of course our Shavasana. So for those of you who have the range of motion and want to try it today, Ekapada is just starting off in this figure four, bringing your hands down to the mat and hooking your foot around your upper arm bone on the left side. And then you're going to, you're going to scoot your back foot back as you lean forward, see if I can do this today, <laughs> placing your shin bone on the back of your arm bones and lifting your back foot up off the mat. And if you've got it, you can extend, whoo, <laughs> you can extend your back foot back, okay? That's where, that's where we <laughs> start to topple over for me. So again, that's where that element of fun comes into play. And you're like, all right, I'm gonna fall, it's okay. All right, so I'm actually gonna try the other side. I'll face you guys and do it. Okay, but for everybody else, stay with me. We're gonna end in Shavasana. And bridge pose and all those good ones. So for everybody else, you can try your balance. Oof, all right. Oh, okay. Oh, that was good. Okay. <laughs> all right. 
So for those of you who aren't balancing, keep practicing. You have just a few more minutes to practice that. And for everybody doing your seated stretches, stay with me here. I'm joining you. Hashimotanasana. Either way, whatever you're doing, tune into your breath. Okay. If you're practicing arm balances, come back to me. Find a seat on the floor and then make your way down onto your back. Okay. If you have a block or a blanket handy, I want you to use it. We're going to do supported bridge today. If you don't have a block, I'll walk you through bridge pose without it. Ladies, if you have a point tell, I like to move mine out of the way so it's not bothering my head or my spine position. Okay, I guess gentlemen too. You guys could do that too. <laughs> you guys have a point tell. Okay, so let's start off with bridge pose. So if you have a block, I want you to lift your hips and place the block under your sacrum. Okay, if you don't have a block, I'm going to walk you through this without one in just a minute. Um, if this is uncomfortable with the block, this should actually feel amazing. If it doesn't feel amazing, I want you to shift the block until it's solid under your sacrum. If it's too low or too high, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel right. So that's probably what's going on. And you can change the position of the block to low, medium, or high position. If you don't have a block, I want you to do dynamic bridge. So we're going to inhale and bring your hips up on the inhale and your arm bones, your arms are moving above your head. So you're finishing with your exhale, inhale and then on the exhale, everything comes back down to the floor. So hands are coming down towards the mat, towards your hips and your hips and hands hopefully touch about the same time. So inhale, you can count to four or five. And then exhale. And I want you to just move at your own pace depending on how quickly you breathe, <laughs> you're gonna do about three to five of these. Okay, I'm gonna do them with you. But I'm not gonna cue you, because again, I want you moving in tune with your own body rhythm. And breathing rhythm. Everybody else who's in support of bridge, I want you to just stay there and enjoy. <laughs> Feel your body sinking a little bit deeper into the earth. Okay, and now wherever you are with your bridge, I want you to come back so that everything is touching the mat. Okay, your hips are on the floor, hands are on the floor. And if you've got the, the block underneath your sacrum, just move it off to the side. Okay, that was a great practice. Go ahead and you can cross your legs or you can just keep your knees together. We're gonna twist towards the left side. So right knee comes on top of left or knees together. Shift your hips over to the right side a little bit and bring your knees to the mat. Left side, extending your right arm to the side. Inhale, back to center, unwind, cross your knees, shift your hips to the left a little bit and come over towards the right side.
All right, knees back up towards the ceiling, unwind, and extend your legs out for final resting pose, Shavasana. I will keep my eyes on the time. I'm actually gonna rock up into a seated position, but I want you all to take your Shavasana. We're gonna be here for a few minutes, but I'm going to sit up so that you guys know I'm keeping my eyes on the time. I don't like to do Shavasana with my class when I'm teaching, which is kind of my own personal preference. So I want you guys to settle in. I want you to feel your energy sinking in towards the earth and enjoying all of the work from your practice and just feeling super proud of yourself that you showed up today for class. Settle in. I love to think about when I'm in Shavasana, my body just resting on some soft sand or a piece of clay and making an impression just from the heaviness of my body. With every exhale, you're releasing any extra residual tension that you have, emotions that you're feeling. Completely letting go. So for those of you who only had 60 minutes to practice today, we're coming right up against the hour. So I'm going to bring you out of Shavasana to a seated position. But everybody else who has an extra three to five minutes, I want you to take it here, particularly right now. I think it's so important for us to just take the extra time that we need for our self-care right now. So if you have a few extra minutes to stay in Shavasana, please do. But for everyone else, I want you to start to bring the awareness back into your body. I want you to wiggle fingers and toes. You can do a few extra stretches. Bring your knees in towards your chest for a hug. If you'd like to, we are going to eventually make our way onto our sides and I want you to stay there. I want you to roll over onto your side and just pause for a moment before sitting up finally. I like to give a little extra time for my shavasanas in class, and I apologize to you guys for kind of rushing out of shavasana today. Um, but I am very conscientious about your time and the things that you have planned for your Saturday. If you're on your side, I want you to gently make your way up to a seated position if, if you're finished with practice today. For everybody else, stay in your shavasana, please. It always feels like the last 15 minutes of class is the fastest <laughs> for me. For me, I have a hard time teaching short classes. All right, my sweet friends, bring your hands to prayer. Thank you so much for coming to class today. I look forward to seeing you in person as well as in virtual classes in the future. I hope you guys have a beautiful weekend. Take care. Namaste. And if you guys have the time to chat or if you have any questions, I'd love to answer your questions here. It's always so good to practice yoga with other people. <laughs> I tell you what, so thanks for coming to class today, everybody. Thanks, Sam. So good to see you. I hope your family as well. Thank you, Sheila. I'm glad you enjoyed class today.
Thank you for being here to everybody. Bring this down a little bit. I can see you guys. I hope you guys are up to some fun things this weekend. We are working on our garden. Great class. Oh, oh, I'm so glad. Thank you. I just see your email, but I'm glad that you're here today. Thank you for coming. Like I said, I hope you guys are up to some fun things. Some fun things right now with your families, having a good time. <laughs> oh, like I said, we're just putting in our yard, putting in our garden, all the things. All right, have a beautiful and blessed weekend. I will catch you guys a little bit later on. Take care, bye.